With the launch of this new emulator here, we have somewhat of a reliable way of emulating Windows games on Android. Let me show you how to get it set up, and I'll give you my overall thoughts and impressions of it. Keeping in mind, this isn't obviously going to work with heavy Windows games, even on this powerful Snapdragon 870 processor here, but if you have any light games, they should work absolutely flawless. The controls do take a little bit of getting used to and it's a little wonky to map it but once you get it set up correctly it works pretty decent. I downloaded this game here from my GOG account as it's one of the only games I have on there and it seems to load absolutely flawlessly. Even on 1080p I'm getting a solid 60 FPS. <laughs> I did try this on my Retroid Pocket 3 Plus, but I couldn't even get the simplest games to run. I think it's just the drivers. The drivers for these Snapdragon processors do seem to work a lot better. I don't recommend this for any non-Snapdragon based Android devices. If you have a powerful Android device though, and you're looking to play some Windows games on it, this is definitely a cool way to do that. Let me show you how to get it set up, and we'll try some games. The first thing that you need to do is head over to the GitHub page and download the latest version of WinLater. If you scroll down a little bit, you should see the APK here. We need to download this and go ahead and install that. Once we have that installed, it's going to come up with a simple interface like this. You won't see this container here as I've already created this previously. Think of these as the Windows interface or the little virtual machine that we're trying to run. Each one of these containers can be configured differently depending on what we want to try to run on it. To add a new container to your device, hit the plus button in the top right corner. You can go ahead and change anything here from the graphics driver to the DirectX version, the screen resolution, and of course the name. To keep your device semi-responsive, I do recommend leaving at least one processor unchecked from the affinity here. Next thing you want to do is to adjust the screen size. You can set this to your device resolution if you prefer, but if you aren't getting as good a performance as you hope, you can always drop it down, keeping the same aspect ratio. For my Snapdragon 870 tablet here, I am going to go ahead and set the resolution to 1080p. This is going to obviously be adjusted per game. The last two options that we need to set up correctly are the graphics driver and the DirectX wrapper. For the graphics driver, I do recommend using Turnip and Zinc for any Snapdragon based processor. The VIRGL is going to be for any Mali based GPU. So that's what I did use on the Retroid Pocket 3 Plus, but unfortunately I still couldn't get it working. For my tablet here though, I'm just going to go ahead and select the Turnip and Zinc graphics driver. Now the DirectX wrapper version comes last. The wrapper version you're going to have to play around with to see what works best on your tablet or your device in general. I find that the DXVK 2.2 is actually what works best for me, but it might work a little different depending on your device. If you're having any performance issues or you just want to see if the game will actually start on something else, just swap that to something different and it might work a lot better. Under the Wine Registry Keys settings, we can change a few different options here. So the top one here is for multi-threading. I do recommend leaving that enabled. We can also change the GPU name here to whatever we prefer. It's set to the 9800 GT, but you could set that all the way to the GTX 1070 if you want. That looks kind of funny, but it's kind of cool. The other options down here at the bottom, we have a rendering mode. I haven't touched that. I haven't touched the shader math. You can change the video memory size if you want, but it seems to work fine on my tablet at 2 gigabytes. In the second tab here for the DirectX components, I leave everything set to Wine. I don't touch any of this stuff. I also haven't touched anything in the Environmental Variables tab. This is all just left to default here. The last tab here is the drive location. So this on our device under the Downloads folder is where we want to put all our game installers. This is the only location I believe that will actually show in the emulator itself. With all the settings correctly set from what we've done, just hit the check and it'll go ahead and save your settings. It'll also create the container where we can launch it. I've copied over a couple GOG installers here and I bought Oblivion just for the heck of it to see if it'll work. We also got Gris, Neverwinter Nights, and Blazing Chrome, so we'll give all those a try and see what works. 
Once we save the container, hit the little menu button up here and select Run. This will start the container up and bring us to our Windows. We boot it into the emulator here and we have a simple interface so you can move around the mouse with the touchscreen like this. It might be kind of hard to see as the resolution is set to 1080p. This tablet also doesn't have HDMI out so I can't use my capture card with it. It's also kind of hard to combat glare on a glossy screen like this so I'm sorry about that. First thing we want to do though is to head over to the D drive as that's where our downloads are stored. Then you can see we have all the installer files here. Those were set to the downloads folder on our device. Let's go ahead and try the easiest game first. I'm going to install Blazing Chrome. So I'm just going to double click on the installer file here and it comes up just as you would in Windows. These installers can take a little while and anything that isn't using UFS storage is going to take even longer. This one's really small so this is a pretty quick installation but I did try Fallout New Vegas and it took absolutely forever. First thing I would do once you install a game is just hit launch to see if it works correctly. If it boots we know that we're okay and we don't have to change any of the DirectX versions. If you close this window here it will also exit out of the emulator so if you want to see what's behind it just minimize. The icon is already set to the desktop so we can launch the game directly from there. Using the DXVK 2.2 actually caused that to freeze so I'm going to use the DirectX version 8.0. That's the one I was using on the other container and that's the one that seems to work, not the DXVK. I'm going to go check that. We're going to boot back in and try starting up the game again. Let's try double tapping on the game here. Hmm, so this one doesn't seem to run correctly. Let's try changing the, the DirectX wrapper version again to see if we can get this one functioning correctly. I swapped the DirectX version to 7.8 and it booted up instantly. Now all we have to do is set some controls. If you want to set your controls, you can use a controller to this, but you, you do have to map these to keyboard buttons. To pull up the menu to swap your keyboard interface, just swipe up from the bottom, then press the back button, then just press the input controls. Make sure to enable the input controls and select it as template. Next, make sure that your controller is turned on, then hit the gear. You can see here that the controller automatically pops up. So click on that and I've automatically selected it to use the WASD. The A button is enter and the start button is escape. I'm not sure if this will work but let's give it a try. So I can't even navigate the menu because these you would have to map these to the keyboard controls so it's a little difficult to get controls working but it does work it just takes a little while but I can press enter on it. I mapped these to the arrow keys and I was able to get the movement working properly. However I also have jump but I can't get shoot working. Menu works. Let me see if I can get that other button working here. I'm gonna set the fire to trigger. As you can see, this is still really early in its development because it's not even registering my trigger. Let's try setting this, the trigger. So instead of enter, cause that's bringing up the menu, I'm gonna swap that to fire. Not sure what that is. According to GOG support, it comes up as Z or A. So I'm gonna set that to A, let's give that a try. Oh, well, button A was already set to shoot, so that's jump. So B button has to be... The other one that it said was Z. So let me try Z, see if that works. No. Huh. What I could have just done was just look in the input options in the settings, but shoot is set to X. So we need to set this one, or sorry, B to X. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. It looks like we also need to set weapon to D and S. So I'm going to set this D, this to S. As far as Blazing Chrome goes, my controller's on and I've been trying to get it to work here for a while and for some reason I just can't get it to work. So the controls were working but now they're not. Let's um, let's try another game and see if a different one works. I'm going to try setting up, let's try Gris see how Gris runs. Do a quick installation and I'll be back when I have it booted up. I just spent the last half an hour trying to get Gris to work and unfortunately I couldn't figure out why it wasn't starting. I tried a couple different graphic versions and I couldn't get it booting. So I went ahead and installed Oblivion. I figured to heck with it we'll just try the most powerful game that I put on the device. It took a long time to install but 
Now it's done installing, so let's give it a launch and just see what the heck happens. Okay. It booted. That was actually really quick too. I'm going to set the resolution just down to 720p. I'm going to shut off the screen effects. Leave VSync. I don't know if I should shut that off. I'll just leave it on. And I'm just going to set it to low. Low should be fine. Let's, um, I guess let's just give it a try. Why not? Let's see what happens. Well, it booted. That's really promising to see. I haven't set up a controller yet. I only have the touch screen, so hopefully we can get it somewhat started. Oh, no, I can't. Oh, I think that was unskippable. Let's see. Nice. This is looking really cool. It's, it's shocking to see Oblivion running locally on an Android device through emulation. It's not the smoothest, but it is working. Let's start a new game. Yes, start a new game. I think there was a cutscene first. Let's see if I can skip that. Loading is really quick. The sound also works really good too, but I just shut it off. Oblivion is working here. I'm going to get the controller properly configured, then we'll come back and see how well it runs. I was going to do a little bit different uh, controller setup, but I just grabbed my 8-bit OM30 since I already had it pre-configured, and it's working. It almost feels like 60 FPS. Let me just make a generic character quick. Enter name. Oh, it won't let me. I might have to set up a controller. So after I configured the controls, Oblivion does run. It's not running at a flawless 60 FPS, but I would say probably 20 to 30-ish. The only thing is, is since it requires a mouse, you have to use the touch screen to turn with it. Oh, okay. So I think what's happening is either my tablet is throttling or the VRAM is filled up because it will smooth out. Then it'll start stuttering again. Yeah, you can see. It's cool to see it running though. This is more of just like an experiment. I don't really see this as a practical application. You obviously don't want to run Oblivion on an Android tablet without a keyboard or mouse or a proper controller. But I think after a couple updates, this could be pretty cool. I'm only running medium settings here, but it is playable. I mean, if you're patient with it, it's it's definitely playable. In the start menu, you can go to system tools, then click on wine configuration. In this menu, you can change things like your libraries. You can change your graphics settings, desktop integration, themes, your drives where your downloads are stored. You can change your audio drivers. You even have a task manager here showing your memory usage and your CPU usage. I don't know why mine is showing zero. It might not be functioning correctly, but it's still kind of cool to see. You also got all your Windows processes here. That's kind of cool. If you want to exit the application, all you have to do is close this window here or swipe up from the bottom, hit the back arrow, then just go exit and it'll exit the application. You're going to have to play around with these just to figure out which is going to work with which game. I found a lot of them are working with the 7.8 here, but you might have to go up to the 8 for certain games. It's going to be hit or miss, and it's definitely a lot of tweaking to get a couple games to run. If you guys figure out a better way to get the controllers working too, let me know. That's definitely one of the biggest issues, I think. This tablet does have a keyboard on it as well, so I could just use that for a lot of these games. Or I could just plug in a mouse, and I could probably use that for a lot of these PC titles as well. I'm not sure what the shortcuts is though. I think that would be, ah, and you can change your settings per game as well. So this is a good section here under the shortcuts to do a quick adjustment to any of your games if they're not running. If you're looking to uninstall your games, all you have to do is hit the start button here and then go to programs, or you can go to your control panel and add remove. Under programs, you can find your game, go over to your game, and then uninstall. This is going to be the same sort of uninstallation process as you're going to see on a Windows device. There we go. Easy. Definitely a cool experiment, but definitely not practical. What do you guys think about running Windows games on Android? Do you think this is going to get better over time? And what kind of games are you going to try seeing if it works? I'm curious to see what kind of games are you all interested in playing on your Android devices? You're definitely going to need a powerful device to play some Windows games, but the Snapdragon 870 does seem to play a lot of the indie titles. Of course, there are certain titles like Gris and a few others that just don't work properly at all. It's going to be hit or miss depending on what you try, but you are going to find a couple titles that do work somewhat decent. Let me know if you found any in the comments below, and if you have any questions, make sure to let me know. As always, thanks for watching, and have fun everybody.